Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Morning Metaphysical Report. Today is January 14th, 2020, and my name is Lysander Zampas. And I am the magical voice in the background known as the Kitchen Witch. Yes. Um, so today I'm going to share with you the day's astrology, numerology, and some other helpful information for your day. I like to start each day with a little energy clearing and blessing. going to use this selenite crystal to send you healing and peaceful energy. I bless you and I bless your day ahead. I bless you that you may find the clarity you need today and that your path be cleared. Be blessed. All right, so now let us talk about the astrology for today. Fantastic. I was looking at that chart this morning, it looks like the planets have shifted a little. Yeah. <laughs> a little shift, a shift, girl. I mean, it's one of those funny things that I don't know about anybody else. I take it for granted. The planets are moving, like they move always. So every morning when I look at that chart to set up for the stream, I'm like, whoa, things are in different places. For convenience, we don't read astrology that way, but our planet also moves. <laughs> the one that we are on. <laughs> oh, man. Alright, so tell us about these planets. What's going on? Alright, so we still have the Sun, Mercury, Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn together in Capricorn. Um, so it is still time to remember that we create our own reality to make decisions for what it is we want in our future and to be the leaders of our own lives. The other people in our lives and the situations are not going to change so it is up to us to act. That is the lesson of Capricorn. We are feeling trapped or limited in any circumstance in any way. We need to acknowledge how our choices have brought us to our present circumstance as the key to liberation. Um, so yes, and when you do that, then you can understand how, um, well, the kinds of choices you need to make going forward to change things. Uh, Mars is a help, in a sense, uh, in Sagittarius. Uh, it encourages our drive to explore what is possible uh, for us and to expand our lives and to make discoveries about what's really going on around us. Uh, knowledge is power and we make better decisions when we have a little more information available to us. And Neptune likewise it assists in this way. Uh, it is in Pisces, so it connects us with our 
deeper emotions and feelings and uh, intuitions, so deeper intuitive knowledge. It is uh, more easily accessed at this time, so that provides uh, another kind of information to us. Venus has moved into Pisces as well. Oh man, that sounds like you and <laughs> <laughs> So in our relationships and especially our love life, uh, we are feeling more dreamy, um, uh, more fantasy oriented, like um, like having having romantic fantasies or fantasies about the person we're involved with or want to be involved with. Um, so it we may be a little detached from reality. Um, also, it does uh, incur, but on the other hand, it does uh, encourage and provide an opportunity for greater depth and sensitivity and vulnerability in our love life. Um, uh, and it can also pot potentially make all parties a bit moody. So there is all that. Hey, everybody's, everybody's good for a little bit of moodiness, right? <laughs> Pull out that uh, tragic playlist and put it on repeat for a day or two. You'll be fine. January's always moody. January's such a moody month. I don't know, maybe it's the start of the year. So Uranus is in Taurus. So if there's any place where you are comfortable, you're probably, you might be feeling very uncomfortable. Uh, Uranus is a planet of revolution and radical change. So, and uh, Taurus likes comfort and security. So we may be finding challenges, things coming up and challenging our sense of security and our comfort zones and our habits, but it's also a time to utilize this energy and shape things up and create a big change now. <laughs> change it. Change it for the better. Uh, the moon is waning in Virgo, so our attention is slowly turning inward into ourselves, and we may be feeling a need to feel of service to others. Uh, so on the downside, it, we may potentially be feeling a bit more crabby, hypercritical of ourselves and others. Um, but but <laughs> uh, on the positive side, uh, Virgo also makes us meticulous, analytical, and better able to uh, or organize things and put things in their proper place. Well, I mean, that's good news. Gosh knows we all can use a little extra organization. I was just thinking how well Virgo complements Capricorn and looking at my notes, the moon is indeed uh, triuned with the sun, Saturn, and Pluto, which are in Capricorn. So we have this internal need for everything to be in its proper place and to be organized. And the planets here in Capricorn uh, are all about organizing your life uh, in accordance with your own directive. Uh, the moon is in opposition with Neptune. So, internally, you are in a more practical, critical place and kind of have to struggle against your own desire or your own intuitions and desire to fantasize about things. Uh, so that is the astrology for today. Thank you. Well, it sounds like a lot of a mixed bag. You've got some good, you've got some bad. But the thing to remember, everybody, so the planets are lined up so that you can make some really positive discoveries and implement some really big changes. So take advantage of this time, you know? Think positively. Gotta take advantage of all that planetary power. Bring me a tissue. Bye, sir. Alrighty then. So next is the numerology of the day.
Oh man, today's numerology is another fun numerology, everybody. Excuse me. This is I do need a minute. I'll, I'll help you out. So everybody, today is a five day. Five days are a day full of surprises. Ooh. I love when things start out with surprises. There you go, babe. Check it out. Surprise day. Anything is possible. Today will exude a sense of excitement and adventure. Dress to impress. If you're a woman, take the extra time needed for your hair and makeup. If you're a guy, make an effort to look impressive. If you're um, something else, uh, wear what makes you feel amazing and magnificent. This will keep everybody guessing. Oh, what fun you'll have. Be spontaneous and take a chance. Go to a restaurant or a part of town you have never been to. If there is someone in the office you have had your eye on, ask them out. This is a day to take a gamble and see what happens. Uh, five days are always all about adventure. And uh, it's a day to expect the unexpected and not to try to really hold on to your plans. So, um, now is time for the crystal healing of the day. And a shot of coffee. <laughs> yes. I have to make more coffee. So, we are working with bloodstone today. We had it yesterday, and it just felt like such a good choice. I decided, let's bring it back. <laughs> so, bloodstone day two, everybody. So, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Bloodstone. I found a different website since yesterday we talked about it too. I thought there might be some different things on this one. The Stone of Courage. Ooh, see, I didn't know that. Bloodstone is a powerful healing stone with strong grounding and protection qualities and was once believed to aid in overcoming enemies. It is very beneficial to use this stone when undergoing the process of transformation. Oh, maybe that's why I felt like it was such a <laughs> Indeed. These were all going to be little transportation. So, let's see. It does several things. I'm scrolling through. There is a lot. <laughs> just, just, you know, add one. It'll be fun. Get the key. Uh, it can help with your energy, with protection, and it stimulates various positive traits such as good fortune, personal power, self-esteem, intuition, success. Uh, so, but you're going to experience the energy of the crystal for yourself. If you'd like to participate in the energy healing, make yourself comfortable, breathe, and allow yourself to connect with energy of this crystal. I'm going to take a moment to have some coffee. Not too dramatic. It's like really lukewarm. Sorry, I, I, it was such a small amount, so I was wondering if I put it in too long, it's just not going to be drinkable or open. I have to make a whole new pot. There's only like a fourth of a cup in the room, but it's enough to give you that little zing. Right. And I, I blessed it as usual. So it's a magical coffee. It is. Alright, so I will begin the crystal healing now.
Uh, this concludes the crystal healing with bloodstone. So take a moment to sit in the healing energy you've received. We are going to be moving into our affirmation for the day in a moment. So I am going to read this affirmation to you the first few times, in first person and second person. And then we will say it together a few times. I think it's important to take a moment to just hear the affirmation so that you can focus on taking the words in rather than on saying them or how you're saying them. This affirmation comes from Kill Your Body by Louise Hay. And this affirmation pertains to depression. Yeah, I thought it was a good day to address that particular issue. Everybody deals with it at some point. I really like the affirmation for this one. I use it even when I'm not feeling depressed. It's such a great, uplifting kind of affirmation. So I'm, I'm excited to share this one today, definitely. Even if this isn't something you're struggling with, it is still a good affirmation. I now go beyond other people's fears and limitations. I create my own life. I now go beyond other people's fears and limitations. I create my own life. You now go beyond other people's fears and limitations. You create your own life. You now go beyond other people's fears and limitations. You create your own life. Now let's say it together three times. I now go beyond other people's fears and limitations. I create my own life. I now go beyond other people's fears and limitations. I create my own life. I now go beyond other people's fears and limitations. I create my own life. I invite you to take this affirmation forward into your day if you like. Uh, that concludes the affirmation for today. I hope everyone really took that one in. I, again, I really like that one. It's a nice one. So what are we doing next? Well, now it is time for the magic tip of the day. Ooh, that's always fun. Mm-hmm. Kitchen Witch has a magic tip of the day. Oh. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, coffee is magic taking just an extra minute every day to bless your cup of coffee before you dip in can be the difference between carrying that coffee with you while it's in your hand or carrying it with you through the whole day. That energy is radiant and can reach everyone around you if you will it to be so. Boom. Bless your coffee. Uh, my magic tip of the day is to remember that um, there's not so much a law of morality as there is a law of exchange. All magic comes with a price. That sounds ominous, but it's not always a bad... It's not usually um, going to cost you an arm and leg or your soul to cast something. It's just the idea that nothing is... Uh, you can't make nothing of nothing, 
and nothing is free. Um, and in magic, you are exerting energy and putting it forth. And it is kind of a natural result that there's an exchange of some sort. Um, it's a little hard to give exact examples, but it is an important thing to remember. Um, so all magic comes with a price, and uh, in life as well, there is always an exchange, even if you're not aware of it. So even if you think you... Uh, so frequently, you know, sometimes we get good things and we kind of, what's it called, pay it forward, even without thinking about it. You've done good things for other people in your life, so it's not necessary to reciprocate, reciprocate with that person who did something good for you. Um, but also things like, uh, especially in spiritual and magical services, uh, even when they're advertised as free, the universe still takes an exchange, even if the uh, reader or magician doesn't. Um, so it's just something to be mindful of and something to contemplate when you're creating your spells and rituals of what um, the exchange is going to be for what it is you're trying to create. And to ask yourself if that is a consequence that is uh, good, negligible, or bad. Because sometimes it's just an exchange where it's just like, it's no big deal. I mean, most of the time. It's no big deal. Do you have a examples? I'm kind of having a hard time thinking of specific ones because it's so like all permeating. Um, examples of exchange or like you know, uh, price of magic. Uh, wait, put me on the spot. Uh, I mean, if you can't think of any either, that's fine. <laughs> in a non non person to person exchange, I suppose. Uh, it doesn't matter what kind of example. Well, for instance, um, the greatest part about the morning metaphysical report is that we are able to do it because we have your support as a community. And even for the members of our community that cannot financially support us, by coming here every day and watching the show and lending your energy, you're actually making it a more successful, more beautiful show to watch. So a good example of that exchange is that you learn from us or receive the uh, crystal healings, but in return, you make the stream more radiant, more um, noticeable, more magical. Uh, it's not an exchange that you intentionally are putting forward, it's one that comes naturally from the relationship. How's that? Yes. So, it, um, as that example illustrates, exchange can take the form of anything. It could be money, energy, time, attention, um, an act or deed, um, the exchange of material things or spiritual things. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I apologize that I can't think of like a, an example in terms of spell work. Uh, uh, the most obvious thing would be like the energy you put into the working itself, or if you work with spirits, the element of exchange is a bit more obvious. Uh, you feed the spirit, spirits your attention and their offerings, and uh, in exchange receive their boon or whatever it is you've asked for that particular day. Um, That's the magic tip of the day. So just something to contemplate on your own of how the idea of exchange has played out in your life and plays out in your practice. Fabulous. So now it is time for the card reading of the day. Oh, you know that's what everybody's been waiting for. Like, oh, where is them cards? <laughs> Let's has us some cards, everybody. It's that time. Let's see if we all get judged or if 
they're nice to us today. All right, so I'm going to choose a deck in a moment. Uh, so this reading is a reading I'm going to be doing for all of you collectively, and you will find that parts of the reading will resonate for you, and for some of you, the entirety of the reading will. So, which deck today? Mm. And I'm on the fence myself. I feel like they're both good choices. Maybe we should lean into... Oh, shit, the way it is. I was going to say the other one. I'm feeling Nicoletta Ciccoli today. Fabulous. What? Oh, it's just kind of like a bit unpleasant. The cold coffee? Yeah. Then why don't you ask me to warm it up more? There's like hardly any left. Judge. So let's see what the cards have to say to us today. We haven't even started. I'm being judged every day, guys. It's not <laughs> warming up the coffee enough. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to start with these two cards here. So this is the Eight of Discs. A weird card. It is a weird card. This card talks about the idea of teaching or training someone. Um, so you could be on either side of this equation. You could be an observer of two other people engaging in this dynamic, or you could be the person who is teaching and disciplining and training, or you could be the person who is being shaped and molded. So it is highlighting a dynamic. Uh, the next card is the King of Swords. This talks about anxious communications. And there's a kind of frantic energy in the card. Like uh, desperately trying to figure someone out or situation out and uh, bringing one's analytical and intellectual cap capacity to a situation and sometimes making plans about how to approach it. So I feel like this applies regardless of which position you take in the prior situation described. Frantic and anxious communication. All right, so uh, let's see if the cards would like to elaborate. All right. So the Ten of Wands. The energy in this situation is oppressive. 
actually really like the way the booklet puts it. In concerns to the situation described, the energy in the situation is oppressive and overwhelming. You will only be more confused and exhausted if you persist. Step aside and let things settle down. Difficulties, too many tasks, lack of help. So whatever is going on, it's saying disengage and step aside, even if it's only temporarily. Uh, you can't get clarity while you are in the situation, so one needs to take a moment to step out of it. The Knave of Wands. Someone who is learning about magic and energy and needs practice in order to control one's will and to create order out of the chaos. So I feel this is advice for you that there's some emotional and mental management that needs to happen. Um, so it's advising to disengage the communication, the anxious communication and trying to sort things out and from whatever position you're in the situation, kind of step out of it so that you can see it better and to sort yourself. Uh, the next card is the Four of Wands. So all three of these cards are wands, so this is talking about one's will, uh, willfulness. Uh, there needs to be a greater exercise of will. The uh, real issue in this situation is of pertains to will and power dynamics and struggles. So the Four of Wands here says that you are, you are, you know, despite whatever's going on, you are moving forward, you are making progress, and you are headed towards success, but that you need to keep going. It is not time to rest. You cannot stop. Even if even taking a moment to step outside and sort yourself is not the same as taking a rest or relishing what you've accomplished. Keep moving forward. The end is in sight. shuffle one more time to see if there's anything they would like to add. I always love reading everybody's feedback as uh, we do readings. It's so interesting to see what resonates. Yeah. Alright, so it does have something else to add. This may potentially be continuing on a prior thought or kind of a secondary thought. So this is death. Something must end for something else to begin. You can't keep what you have and get what you want. You must let who you think you are die and awaken reborn as your real self. Especially with the uh, Saturn and Pluto in conjunction, this is a good time to shed all that 
constrains you. The Knave of Swords. This, this describes a person, probably you, who has a very active mind, uh, intellectual, intelligent, creative person, uh, but that you need healthy outlets for curiosity, healthy outlets for your mind to spin. Your mind can definitely get caught up in anxious patterns and creating uh, scary scenarios in your mind. So you need to acknowledge that and create an outlet for your mind power to really benefit you rather than terrorizing yourself with it. The Nine of Swords. This card talks about how one's nightmares are coming into reality, which sounds grim, I'm sure. Um, one's fears are being realized. But the thing to do is that you can either stand and face the crisis bravely or kind of duck and wait for it to pass because it will there's nothing that can be done to prevent it from occurring so you can either approach it directly or wait for it to blow over the final card is the fool this is a card of beginnings totally fresh starts this also talks about following your heart and allowing yourself to be your individual self. So, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Be yourself, everybody. Be that divine you that sparkles and shines and greets the day. Every day. Sparkle and shine. So that concludes the card reading for today. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm. Do we all say it in a thank you? <coughs> magical. Oh, thanks. I didn't feel judged today. Woo! Sometimes that's a nice change. <laughs> Lately it feels like the readings every day have been pretty judged. Great. So now I would like to mention a few announcements before we go into our book reading for the day. If you enjoyed the morning metaphysical report, and please please like, follow, subscribe to my page or channel. Um, if you follow me on Facebook, YouTube, or Patreon, you will also see um, all the other content I produce. I'm also on Instagram, but not as many things end up there, because there's a 60-minute limit. And uh, frequently, the morning report is too long. <laughs> um, so this report happens because of support from viewers like yourself, and we are very grateful. And we're grateful for the opportunity to create something like this and to offer it to you. So if you would like to support the uh, morning report being able to continue and to grow and to expand uh, please visit patreon.com slash freedom dream coaching and join a membership today um, that's the best way to support us the second best way which is also super important is to uh, continue uh, showing up and watching and sharing the video um, not just on Facebook and through the internet, but also with people that you know in real life. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, on Patreon you can find information about us, uh, the goals we're working towards, such as improving equipment and of course growing the content. We want to add a magic cooking segment to the morning report Ooh. and a spiritual fitness segment. And I'm gonna go to cat cam real quick. Let's see if we can catch her. There we go. Cat 
half cam. Sorry, honey, let me move those off of the spot. Um, yes, so it is very important. Your support also feeds the cats. Mm. That's an important thing to remember, everybody. Your support feeds pretty gatos. All right, um, and you can also on Patreon learn about our membership levels. You receive special access, rewards, and perks in return for your membership. Uh, our lowest membership level is $1 a month. Uh, every bit matters, and we're very excited to have everyone join us. <laughs> She is so sweet. Yes. There are people there are people watching you right now. Also make sure to check out our Instagram for short videos on cats. Hashtag more cats. Yeah. Hashtag all the cats. She's such a sweetie. Um are is there anything you'd like to add to the announcements before we move on? Um Nothing, nothing remotely rational. Uh, an overwhelming urge to sing songs about ducks, but I don't know that I don't know that today is quite that crazy. <laughs> Be adventurous. Yeah. Sing songs about ducks in public and look good doing it. That's that's what I'm <laughs> doing today. <laughs> All right, so we are going to move on to our book reading for today. Time for a book club. Oh, she spied the dog upstairs. Uh-oh, doggo. She's our sweet little guard cat. Whenever the, the dog from upstairs is outside or other people, she'll growl. Mm -hmm. We've not yet captured her growl on camera, but she does growl. She does. She, she's a little growl. It's pretty <laughs> funny. Oh. Um, Well. Time to start book club. So for those of you that joined us today for the updates of the day, we're so glad that you're here. And if you stick around, the book club reading right now is fantastic. Highly recommend. So we are reading through All Is Well by Louise Hay and Monica, or Mona Lisa Schulz. Um, so, uh, just a little quick preface before I get into the reading. This book addresses uh, healing physical and emotional conditions uh, that relate to the seven chakras or chakras or emotional centers in our beings. And it addresses one at a time in separate chapters. Uh, so if you already know which chakra you tend to have blocks in or that you're working on, uh, that's good. You'll kind of have an area of focus for this. Here, I'm going to read through the whole thing, so uh, all of it is good information and food for thought, contemplating um, our own patterns and what's going on with us. On my Facebook page, Lysander Xanthus Clairvoyant Psychic, there is um, a pinned post, the All Is Well Self-Assessment Quiz. Um, it's not necessary to take it to get value out of this reading, but I do suggest it. It's going to quiz you and help you figure out the sections you score highest on are the areas that you need to focus on for healing. So it'll point out which chakras that you have the most issue in. Um, so I have been reading through the chapter for the root chakra or first emotional center which pertains to issues of security, survival, bones, joints, blood, immune system, and skin. So I'm going to continue that chapter now. Even if it isn't pertaining to something that you think you're specifically struggling with, it's still interesting things to contemplate. So let us get going. Uh, blood problems. People who have anemia, bleeding, bruising, or other blood problems tend to feel as though they've hit bottom, but they are completely alone with no support from family and friends. They have become so destabilized that they trust no one, 
and they live in a world filled with seemingly endless chaos. If this sounds like you, your health depends on your ability to dig yourself out of this pit of hopelessness and create some order and balance in your life. The area of blood disorders covers a wide spectrum ranging from anemia to acute leukemia. Some of these disorders are benign, meaning they resolve completely with therapy or do not cause symptoms or are not life-threatening. Others, such as sickle cell anemia, acute leukemia, or certain lymphomas, are more serious in that they cause chronic illness or are life-threatening. Determining the origin of blood problems can be confusing because many of them can be associated with imbalances in either the first or fourth emotional center or root or heart chakra, lack of emotional nurturance, a fourth emotional center or heart chakra problem affects the organs that move the blood, including the heart, arteries, and veins. So the problem is with the organ of, is with the organ of the fourth emotional center rather than with the blood itself. For disorders of the heart, such as high blood pressure and blocked arteries, turn to chapter seven. We will get there eventually. The goal in this section is to help change the negative thought patterns and behaviors associated with blood problems of the first emotional center or root chakra. The first step in this journey is to identify the messages in your body, the messages your body is sending you about the emotions underlying your illness and create health with affirmations. For example, anemia stems from both a lack of joy and a fear of life plus an underlying belief that you're not good enough. So to address this joylessness and insecurity, use the affirmation, it is safe for me to experience joy in every area of my life. I love life. Bruising is about having trouble managing the little bumps in life and punishing instead of forgiving yourself. Remind yourself that you are worthy of forgiveness and love with the affirmation I love and cherish myself. I am kind and gentle with me. All is well. Bleeding problems can be seen as joy running out and anger is often associated with the bleeding. If this sounds like you, try to calm the anger and find the joy in life with the affirmation. I am the joy of life expressing and receiving in perfect rhythm. Blood clotting involves the shutting down of joy. If you feel blocked emotionally, try repeating, I awaken new life within me, I flow. In the realm of the blood, health problems are a reflection of not only your feelings, but also the chaos around you. Whether it's caused by a painful family life, a chaotic relationship, or a demanding boss. Intuitively, your body, specifically your blood, is letting you know that you need more support. You must do everything you can to establish secure roots, even if it's uncomfortable. Ask more of the people around you. Leaning on family, friends, and community is a vital part of achieving health in the first emotional center. This is a process. Start small. Ask for help in the little things rather than requesting that someone provide a big service. With the success of each request, you will gain a little more trust in the relationships you have. And if someone fails you time after time, you will be better able to recognize the stable relationships in your life. Your goal is to identify the solid people and then find a balance between providing support for yourself and accepting help from others. From the clinic files, blood problems case study. As a child, Denise moved a lot because of her father's gambling addiction. The family was uprooted time and time again, fleeing from her father's creditors. There's never enough money for food and Denise and her brother and sisters went to school hungry almost every day. When she was in her twenties, Denise's boyfriend hit her. She suffered multiple injuries that she hid from families and friends. One morning, Denise woke to find that she could, bear, she could hardly walk. She was so exhausted she could barely make it to the phone to call for help. Eventually, her doctor diagnosed her with severe anemia. 
After talking to Denise, we came to see that she had hit her physical and emotional rock bottom. What she craved but did not have was family support. And because she had never had it, she did not know how to get that support elsewhere. To Denise, the world was a dangerous and lonely place, and she was unable to trust even her closest friends. She was empathetic and understanding with her friends and family. She was the one people came to with their problems. However, she was so sensitive to others' needs that she tended to absorb the emotional and physical pain of those around her. Because she had done this for years without an emotional outlet for her own fears, her body began to react to the stress. Denise was emotionally and physically anemic, so it is important to identify both the energetic and hematologic leaks that she was experiencing. A medical intuitive reading helped us pinpoint where she was overly giving of her life energy in her unhealthy relationship with her boyfriend and with her family. The next step was to figure out where the physical leak in her body was. We had to determine what was causing her to lose red blood cells so much that she was becoming anemic. I told Denise to go to her physician and get a test called a complete blood count, or CBC. This test would analyze all of the different components of her blood and it would help us know why she was anemic. Many doctors tried to cure all cases of anemia by just giving patients iron. However, not looking at the underlying reasons why someone is anemic may lead to a more serious problem. There are three reasons why people become anemic. One, loss of red blood cells. This could be a result of trauma. Denise had been hit by her boyfriend. How seriously, we don't know. A gastric ulcer, excessively heavy periods, blood in the urine, or internal injuries. Two, inadequate red blood cell production. This could be caused by iron deficiency, why doctors usually give iron, heredity, including thalassemia, thalassemia, uh, drug use, including alcohol, and chronic illness, like hypothyroidism, low adrenal gland hormone production, chronic hepatitis and B12 and folate deficiency, called megaloblastic anemia. Three, red blood cell destruction. This can come from an enlarged spleen, from lupus, or as a side effect to medicines like penicillin or sulfonamide from mononucleosis or other viral infections. Looking only at Denise's age, not yet menopausal, most people would assume that her anemia resulted from heavy periods. If this were true, the iron cure would be great for her. However, by studying her CBC test results, we saw that the number of immature red blood cells, called reticulocytes, were at a very low level. She was not making enough red blood cells. Iron, blood loss, and heavy periods were not the problem. By looking at the size of the red blood cells that she did have, Denise's cells were bigger than usual. Her physician figured out that she had a very rare condition called macrocytic anemia, which is caused by low B12 in her diet and low B12 absorption because of long-term stress and an antacid use. We verified our suspicions with another blood test to measure her B12 and found that we were correct. Under the care of a nurse practitioner, Denise got regular B12 shots until her B12 norm levels normalized. She began taking a pharmaceutical grade multivitamin B complex and had regular B12 tests to confirm that she was absorbing it. To remove the barrier to B12 absorption, I had Denise go to a Chinese acupuncturist and herbalist to address her anxiety and heartburn. In addition to her relationship counseling about the stressors with her boyfriend, Denise began taking a herbal blend that contained rhizoma, uh, some other herbs to number too numerous to list here. Denise also started working with the affirmations for general blood health. I am the joy of life, expressing and receiving in perfect rhythm. Joyous new ideas are circulating freely within me. Anemia, it is safe for me to experience joy in every area of my life. I love life. And fatigue, 
I am enthusiastic about life and filled with energy and enthusiasm. Working to shift her mindset helped her bring joy back into her life by helping her release her fears and begin to realize her self-worth. Within six months, her anemia was resolved. All right, uh, so I'm going to stop here for today and we will continue in this chapter tomorrow and address immune system disor disorders. So, um, yeah. The relationship between mind and body is interesting and so is the way that um, bringing all that, all kinds of different kinds of medicine can offer bringing that all together is very interesting as well. All right. So I am going to be bringing the morning metaphysical report to a close. So I would like to thank everyone who joined me today and for watching, and I hope that this has brought um, uh, something good and positive to your day. Uh, I'm glad you like the book, Pamela. It's, um, I hope to share helpful materials. Uh, well, I will see you all again tomorrow morning, everyone. Uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day and be blessed. Have a fantastic day, everybody.